obviously a credit to Kevin Warren for getting two of the most prestigious programs in the country to come to our league. I think anything that benefits the league is a good thing. How big is too big to have a good conference tournament? I mean, at what number does uh, it start becoming unrealistic? You know, I think I think there's always a solution to a better situation like that. You know, we'd make it work. Those guys would be nice. So Chris is over there, you know. He's going to have huge expectations this year based on what Keegan just did. How do you evaluate that? Do you, do you think that's a well, good thing? Well, first of all, I'm, I'm really excited for him. It's the first time in his life that he hasn't played with his brother. He accepted the challenge of coming back. And he, as I said before, he bet on himself. A lot of guys, you know, if they have a two-way, they, they, they take it. And he could have gone to a two-way if he wanted it. But he wanted to come back. He loves his teammates, and he wants the responsibility that's going to be placed on him. And he's ready for it. He's worked hard for it, and I'm excited for him. Obviously, a long way to go for him, but how? where would you say the point guard competition is at, at least at this point? I think about as you would have expected to be. Aaron Eulis is, is in his third year playing really well. Asante Bullock is a terrific player. Competing every day, we have other options. Obviously, we have Tony Perkins can play the one. Connor can play the one. So we, we have a lot of ways that we can go. And the other thing is, those guys can all play together. You can play Asante, Aaron, and Tony together, kind of like we did last year. Sometimes we go. So there's a lot of ways. Asante said your offense was part of the reason he picked Iowa the upset, but how often does that seem to be the case where that helps you? I think for the most part. I mean, I think he was a guy, Pat, who probably studied it a little more intently than everybody. Others, some do. Some just say, hey, they play fast. You know, they're not playing 53, 51 games. I want to be where we're up tempo. I mean, they don't study the specifics of it. it and even on his visit, we, we went through some stuff and we kind of showed him what we do, how we do it, why we do it that way, why he's a fit. So I think from that standpoint, he felt really good about it. And that, of course, took place before his season. So then he watched us play. I think with a different level of understanding last year, he didn't turn the game on as a fan. Hey, we're going to play there next year. It's okay. What are they running? What are they trying to do here? We would have those types of conversations on the television, talking to watching us play. What did you see? What did you think? Because you know, pretty soon he's going to have to be out there thinking for himself. What are your plans, or maybe a rough outline for Josh Dix this year? Well, I expect him to be ready to go September 1. So when that happens, we'll be full go, and then we'll see what happens. But right now, he's I think in a really good place physically. He's pushed himself about as hard as he should have, not too, too hard, so there's no setbacks. You know, I think that's the thing we're always worried about with injuries of that caliber. You know, it's hard, because he's over on, we're practicing on this court, he's over there. He wants to be over here, so he's gonna go that much harder, and he can't. You just have to stay with your rehab program, and then you know, when the time comes, you turn him loose, but he's, he's getting closer. I know you weren't surprised at all, but what were your impressions of how Keegan played in the summer leagues? Well, I'll be honest with you, I was pretty outspoken about it. You know, when I, I was on NBA radio and I was talking to privately a lot of NBA GMs and I spoke very candidly where I thought he should be. No disrespect to anybody that was drafted ahead of him, but I felt like Keegan and Bonchero were the two best players in the draft. And I said that to anybody that would listen. And I'm, you know, I was a big, I'm a big Chet Holmgren guy. I love Chet. We recruited Chet. And I just think Keegan's better than, than those other those other guys. And you know, I, I think he's smart enough to know that okay, yes, he was the best player in the summer, not even close. But that's just the beginning. You know, you know, 
month or so, you gotta here come the big boys. So now you know, that's a whole other that's a whole other challenge for him. But the thing about him is he is perfectly suited for exactly that. He, he will not rattle. He care who he's guarding, who's guarding him. He'll do what he does. He makes shots. He makes plays. I thought some of the plays he was making off the dribble for his teammates were among the most impressive things that he did. On top of the fact that he shot a well from three, that he shot a well from two, that he got to the free throw line, that he rebounded, and defended. We all knew he could do those things, but he was doing stuff off the dribble in that offense. I and mean, I actually went to their practice on Tuesday and saw what they were running and how they were using it. Really, really good stuff. Perfectly suited for him. I was really impressed with Jordy and, and, and the stuff they were doing. I had a chance to meet Coach Brown and talk to him. And they're really excited about Keegan, and they should be. But I think what you'll see is he'll be the most ready immediately, and then he'll continue to get better and fit in seamlessly with the other guys they have. How have you seen Riley and Josh kind of take the responsibility to? In fact, you guys need a big man to play this year. They're both working really hard. I mean, I think I think Riley has had some really good workouts in a row. He's, he's getting extra work in coming in on his own. You know, Josh, now year three, you know, I think he kind of understands what we need from him. So uh, those two guys are going to have an opportunity to play. So we need to get them ready, and that's what this time is for. How about Maybe he didn't have to be in the office. Well, you know, I think he, he's, not a, he's not a big verbal guy. So he's not going to be screaming and yelling. Uh, but he is really prepared for this opportunity. Since the season ended, you know, he was with his brother down in Chicago working out. He's in great shape physically. He has played really well in our workouts, both on the perimeter and in the post. Play with a great deal of confidence, as you would have expected. So you know, I'm excited for him. You know, I will encourage him to speak up more and to kind of take that responsibility. You know, Connor's pretty much the guy that does that. But you know, Chris will be one of those guys that you know, he commands respect. So when he does say something, people are going to listen. You have two new walk-ons in Amaya Nimmers and Dante Eldridge. What have those two brought to the program? In the first They've been great. Tremendous attitude, incredibly hard workers. And Dante's a little bit different. I mean, he played high school ball with Patrick. His dad's on staff. So he, he's grown up in this gym. And Marion you know, is, is new, but he's come in in great shape and with a great attitude. You know, so I'm excited to see how he develops. With his rise and you know being under recruited, people say he's not like your typical preferred walk on. He probably could have had scholarships. Elsewhere. We had scholarships. You're right. He did. And I give him credit. He wanted to, you know, he, I think, viewed himself as somebody who could play at this level. And wanted that challenge. So I think you have to really respect a guy that thinks that way. Is there a chance that Josh will be able to play with you, Josh? I think he will. I'd be surprised if he wasn't. I mean, our, every uh, doctor has said he should be ready to go by September. Pretty horrendous injury, though. Yeah, it was. It was, but I mean, they got on it right away, and the surgery went well. And he's been very diligent with his rehab. I don't think we've talked talk to you since Gaines was hired. I don't think so. Um, what's been the best injection that he's given you so far that you've seen? You know, Matt, Matt is special. I mean, he's my first captain. He's really paid his dues in this profession. And, uh, you know, was a great hire for our program. He believes black and gold up here and just was in a position where he, it, there's no learning for him. He's doing a great job at Drake, so he's already in the recruiting world. He's already done all the court stuff. His knowledge is impeccable. And he'll be he'll be awesome for this program for many years. So. One more question. I think Connor is all this year. You see it adapting a little bit more maybe towards the backcourt without Jordan. It's funny, that could be, uh, but it could be in the front court because we need help up there too. You know, so I think for him, it starts with his leadership and then, you know, 
obviously affect his versatility. This is really helpful to the team that has some youth. Uh, but uh, the other thing with him, I think that's really important, it's the first year he's played basketball year round in his life. He's always went on the baseball season and then jumped in late. So I think his game is really at a whole other level. So I 